Good evening. Welcome to the July 1st, 2020 Select Board Board of Health meeting here at 6 o'clock. Actually, we're at 610. I'm sorry, we had technical problems. Um, the dial-in number is now 206-331-4836. Same dial-in number, but the PIN has been changed. The PIN number is 918-982. 182 pound. Again, for every everyone, this is 918-982-182 pound. We're really sorry about that. Uh, we seem to have some problems lately. Okay. Well, listen, thank you for tuning in and welcome. We're going to call this meeting to order. Um, uh, Dave is on vacation. Hope you're having a great time, but he did call in. And I have to read that meetings normally held at the municipal office are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access where required public participation provided in accordance with governor's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law MGL chapter 30A section 20. Um, again, this is being remotely, uh, this is being broadcast by FCAT, the Frontier Community Access Television, and you can dial in to participate. Um, so I'm calling the meeting to order. First order of business um, is uh, select board announcements. Trevor, do you have any? Uh, well, a couple things we've been working on this week. Um, so today we had a really good, um, uh, we attended a webinar for uh, how breweries interact with our wastewater treatment plant. Um, that was really good. So um, our local brewery took part in that um, education piece. So uh, we're working on ways to kind of help control the output of what comes out of the breweries because it, it's, it's devastating on our sewer plant. So the amount of stuff that comes out, um, what comes out, when it comes out, how, what the concentration is, um, what's in, inside of it. Um, so we're looking at ways and we're, we're setting up meetings with, with the brewery to try and work together to try and help uh, come up with a plan for when we take down the clarifier and we're on those two temporary uh, lungs to try and get that stuff cleared. And um, so that, that's been going on. We also have, um, next week I plan to meet with uh, Berkshire Design in coordination with our um, town common committee to, to look at um, the common to get moving on that project because we have some funding that was allocated from the town meeting to get moving on getting a final you know getting a design laid out professionally and finding out where everything is what we can move what we can't move and then start to um you know blend that into time bonds work who's who've been designing the leary lot and um i think have been looking at some complete streets too so we've got to kind of kind of tie all that stuff together but that We've been working on that um, and hope to have some information next week and just to start that ball rolling. So I'm pretty excited about getting going on that for, for this year. So um, a lot of other stuff going on, but that, that's all I got. Okay. Um, one thing that um, I wanted to add is that we had a very successful 350th committee meeting on Monday. And I hope that anybody that's interested at, in any aspect of um, the 350th would be wanting to f step forward pretty soon because we're setting, starting to set our events and activities and it's really fun um, and really uh, wonderful. David Lawless um, has volunteered uh, to do pro bono work to set, a, set up our um, 501c3 corporation so that we can start fundraising Sounds and right. moving forward. So it very, everything is working really, really well. So I just want to thank everyone. We need, need more people for sure. Yes, to, to, yes. Uh, we've got a lot of things to plan and, and it doesn't seem like it's a, you know, it seems like it's a long ways away, but it's not. No, not so, actually. Uh, and, and, and there is, there's going to be real reason to party by then. So yes. oh, and we want to have a good time. Yep. Um, so the next item on the agenda is Board of Health. Um, I just want to make an announcement that um, uh, we are allowing uh, tag sales again in town. We have um, a tag sale policy that we're going to vote tonight. 
Um, I would just like to say that the town of Deerfield seeks to provide efficient effect and uh, effect in the, mi in the mi midst of the cor coronavirus pandemic. Um, public health and safety is paramount. So per governor's emergency order 38, revised and enacted June 6, 2020, and notification by the public health on June 30th, 2020, the guidance for reopening. These are the guidelines for tag sales. There's a cap of 20 tag sales per day with locations hopefully dispersed through town. In other words, we don't want to have all 20 tag sales on Sugarloaf Street or something like that. So um, a cap of 20 tag sales per day. There, the, $5, the $5 fee will be waived. Residents must call the select board office, however, to obtain one of the permit numbers. A permit number must be displayed at the site. So if you call in and are permit number five, then you just must um, display a number five somewhere on your site. No more than 10 persons congregating on the site, including the homeowner. Um, so this is what's really important and what the reference was to governor's order number 38 is still we are uh, regulated by the governor and DPH, Department of Public Health, no more than 10 persons congregating inside or outside of any sponsored event. So if people must wait in their cars if there's more than 10 at your site. And tag sales should be set up with social distancing in mind. In other words, please put enough space between the tables and, and um, try to make it so it can be, people can circulate efficiently. And masks must be worn by everyone, including the homeowners. So, um, Trevor, did you have any input on this or? No, it'd be nice to get back to some sense yes. of reality and, uh, you know, normalcy and people, I know they've probably been in their homes looking to unload some things. So yeah. it'd be good to see some tag sales out there. And I know people really do enjoy that on the weekend. Um, they get out. And Unfortunately, some of it's probably their spouses. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> um, so uh, so it'd be nice to see people out and, you know, doing tag sales again. So, Dave, did you that. have any comments or do you have any input? No, um, you know, it's good that we're getting going again and it's just, you know, we're controlling it, which is good. It's, um, I think people are going to look forward to it. Yeah. So the tag sale safe. policy, um, once we vote it, will be on the website um, if anyone has any questions. And uh, obviously tomorrow is the only day you can call in for the three-day weekend. So please call in uh, tomorrow if you want to do anything over the weekend. But actually, this is going to be legal again, so you can advertise in the newspaper and that kind of stuff. So um, I make a motion to approve this policy. I'll second that motion. Okay, um, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Dave? Aye, Dave Walker. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Okay, so this will be, public, this will be um, posted on our website. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. I also just wanna say thank you to Dick Kalaszewski. Um, we've, mm -hmm. you know, there's been an awful lot of work lately. Um, we've had temporary extension of premises, you know, out into pr on the parking lots and stuff so businesses could open up. And the, you know the library and Yankee Candle, Douglas Gallery. Everybody's you know policies and and uh, plans and just there's just been a tremendous amount of work. And I just want to thank Dick um, for handling it because mm -hmm. it's 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 been tough. You Not know it's been work. constant. Casey and Jen have been been super busy in the yep, office. everybody's been doing it. So I just want to thank everyone. Mm -hmm. um, it's very exciting. We are, Massachusetts had no deaths yesterday to COVID-19. That's the first time since February. So I just want people to know we've been doing really, really well. We need to continue with wearing masks, masks, washing your hands, social distancing are really what's gonna help us. So please, please do not give up. Um, we need to hang in there uh, and keep the virus from circulating. Um, now some more lovely news. The mosquitoes are out again. Um, so we've been trapping the melanora. 
there's, there's three really species of the 52 that we have to watch. The perturbans and the melanora are the ones that we have here in Deerfield that um, have a tendency to carry disease. The melanora population is up pretty high, actually. So even though we've had dry weather. So please make sure after all these rainstorms, it's lovely to have rain. Uh, but just patrol your yard. Make sure you're, you're um, dumping water and you don't have sitting water. Kevin will be uh, putting out um, BTI for lava siding um, as he drives around with the highway crew. So hopefully this year in the next week or two is when we traditionally start having West Nile disease. Um, and hopefully we'll skate by a little bit this year because we had a late start or later start. Trevor, did you have anything else you wanted to ask? No. Okay. Next item on the agenda is um, uh, our minutes. So and I wanted to make a, a change. So we have uh, executive session minutes for um, September 25th. Um, was there a date change you were gonna? No, I was, the only thing I wanted to mention is the minutes do say, and we did say in the meeting that we were going to re-enter into open session and continue the meeting at 4 p.m. the next day. Yes. That actually didn't take place because you can't continue a meeting like that. So I think we posted again and met another date. But I just wanted to kind of make a note that, you know, I know they say that we were going to get started again at four the next day. We didn't actually do that. We ended up posting a meeting later on in the in the week. Okay, I, I had a correction on the um, the meeting date was 2019, 2019 uh, and right. not 2020. Yeah. I just have to find them again. But Casey, did you get both of those corrections? Um, the way I'll reference the correction on the date that you would go back into it is I'll make a note before the end of the minutes that, okay, says, great. Um, that select board was unable to go in to enter into open session at on this date due to posting requirements. Yes, thank you. Yep, and then we'll just change the date to September 25th. Oh yeah, here here it is. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Thank I, you. I changed it September 25th, 2019. I changed yep. it in the first section okay, while you great. were talking. That's great. Thank you, Casey. Thank you. Okay, um, with amend amendments, I make the motion we approve these minutes. I'll second that motion. Okay, is there any further discussion? Dave, do you have any further discussion? No, I'm all set. Okay, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Walter. Aye, Carolyn Ness. That, make that unanimous, please. Yeah. Next, next item on the agenda is um, the annual transfer station sticker fees. Mm -hmm. um, Kevin is recommending that we keep everything the same. I just want to verify that the stickers are, are good through the end of August, did we say? Yes, the end okay. of August, but people could start purchasing them in July. Yep. And, um, but they are, they are safe to still use the, the transfer station till the end of August. And at that point, you obviously need a sticker to enter. Um, so Kevin is saying that we should keep the pricing the same. And um, so I just, I just want to remind the public that, you know, we had a huge increase in cost because of, um, because nobody's taking recycling anymore. So it was like a twenty-eight thousand dollar hit to our to our you know transfer station budget this year. Um, so while I get wanting to leave the price the same, you know that money comes from somewhere. So um, and generally this is a user based item so everybody that uses it pays for it you're not taxing everybody for the um for the use of it i mean anybody can use it but you have to buy a sticker and you have to buy bags so that's where we generate the cost other than what we were able to sell out of there and you can't make any money on used to be able to make even money or break even on the recycling and now you have to pay quite a bit so we're we're in the hole you know quite a bit on that budget so i i mean um if if I know that we do charge probably more than most areas, I think, but um, most areas I, I also think fund their transfer station through taxation as well, so, or they run a deficit every year. So um, we've been very good, I think. This, this town has been great, not, not from me, but just ever since I've been here, seeing the work that you've done before I've come on trying to turn this into a, a losing proposition every year to a, um, you know, a break even. You know, we're yeah, not looking to make a profit. Goal. We're looking to break even on that 
where everybody pays their share to get rid of the trash. And just I just want to note again, it's $20,000 more this year than it was last year. So um, I think it, I know we budgeted uh, at this. Yeah. Is there a question from the audience? or? It, yeah, uh, this is Chris Harris. Hey, um, Chris. When you take the 28000 and divide it by the number of stickers that went out, say, in the last year, mm -hmm. does anyone know how much that would correspond to? I do not off the top I, of my head. Yeah, I don't know what it is off the top of my head. We We normally... What it is is it's a balancing act between charging too much and people dropping it off on, you know, trash on the side of the road, which mm -hmm. we end up having, you know, to highway crew anyways. and get rid of it ourselves. So I mean, there's a huge cost. So it's a it's a constant battle of just being right, and we have been trying very very hard to keep cutting our costs without. Um, I mean, we did some savings. We've had savings with um, little mini grants mm -hmm. and, yeah, and, I and, think and and putting in the compactors ourselves right. instead of, you know, renting them. And so we've had savings over the years that we've been able to keep the prices pretty, you know, much the same. And I think Kevin did that again this year. Yeah. He's looking at other grants and stuff. So while I say it's 28000 there's other areas that we're trying to offset that increase on, too. So I don't know what the final figure is, but... Um, you know, we may have to look at. at and, the, and, the, and the other question I would have too is I don't know what the split of revenue coming in to, to manage the cost of the transfer station is between the annual permits versus the uh, small and large orange bags. Yeah. But has any thought been given to changing the price on them? Um, and would that would that help manage the overall cost as well as um, kind of push? folks more to think about recycling versus right well except yes yes we have chris and um again i i feel like we're sort of on the high end uh because we don't subsidize well, it anymore and um so we're, we're kind of we have to just watch it and the best thing to do is to offset it with some kind of you know with grants or some kind of savings and that's what we're constantly doing um you know, or saving on uh, tipping fees. We've mm -hmm. tried to be more efficient in our tipping and, um, uh, you know, the f pickup fees. And, and the other so thing that will help a little bit on this budget year is that, you know, we pushed off all the revenue increase that we would normally take at the end of last year, the FY20, before the end of June, we would normally collect a, a bunch of money on all those stickers that we will now push into this year. So we will have some more funding. <laughs> leveled out in this year to pay for you know pay for that but um i think it's just you know if kevin thinks we should stay the same um we've budgeted the same i just think um i just want to keep an eye on that so maybe by the time we get to fall we see what we sold for stickers you know i know we just ordered some bags as well um we just keep an eye on that we may have to yeah. may have to make a change at some point um you know if, we, if it right. looks like we're not going to cover that right um, I guess yeah, because right now for a sticker cost, you're if we absorb that on just the stickers, you're looking at forty to fifty dollars more a sticker. Right, that's a lot. Yeah, that's and a so lot. that it is very significant. And the other thing is, is you know, when you start going up too high on these prices, you start getting more dumping, like we're finding on Pine Street and stuff. Yeah, I, do, I saw that too. With some couches laying yeah. around. Yeah, it's just you know that. Yeah, that's just. Um, that's actually yeah. Kevin's concern. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, that's always our concern. Yeah. You're trying to balance that all the time. So. Um, because we, it has happened before when we, went up significantly on prices, and we found, you know, like Sand Valley, Hawks Road, and Pine Street. All these places are just become dumping grounds. Mm -hmm. Old Albany Road, still even Stillwater. I yeah. mean, yeah. people would dump stuff in Stillwater. I don't know anybody who lives on Old Albany though. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not in the beginning. At towards up on the hill there. Um, <laughs> anyway, okay. Um, I make the motion that we keep the price the same and just keep an eye on it. But we're, we're keeping an eye on all our budgets. So I don't, you know, mm -hmm. we'll just see what happens. Let's just look back at that in the yeah. fall and see what how that's coming in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so um, 
You, you made a motion. I'll make a sec I'll second that, Trevor McDaniel. Is there any more discussion, Dave or Chris or anybody? All right, hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfer. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Okay, unanimous. Thank you. Um, I think we're gonna um, we're gonna uh, wait uh, table on any kind of um, appointments at this point. Uh, the next item on the agenda is um, the solid waste management plan comments. I uh, this has to do with the COVID, what COVID impacts there are. And um, Casey, I was just wondering if you could call Janamine and is there any way that we can whine about? Uh, the COVID impacts that might help us with uh, reducing the recycling costs? The, 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 I, I can whine, but I already sent an email to Jan and she's going to get back to me. Um, I mean, there's no huge... These, are, these people are primarily seeking comments on environmental justice issues. So she's, her comment is, I'm following DEP's proposed changes to ban mattresses from disposal and increase the minimum generation for food waste diversion at restaurants. So those are her two comments right off the bat. Okay. Well, um, um, I can ask her for a little more information. Why don't, um, why don't you let me take some notes on, on exactly the questions you want me to ask her? Okay, well, there's no huge rush because the, the, I just want to make sure our comments are in before November 12th, which is the Springfield uh, public hearing. Yes. Okay, so if just use the timeline of November 12th because we want to get it in for that public hearing, okay? I think the comment period goes through September, but I will check. I, I think it, it said yes, on the September back, it 15th. said... Oh, September 15th or December 15th? 15th. It will close on September 15th. The, the public comment period is now open. will close September 15th, 2020. Okay. Yeah, they reopened it through COVID. They decided to reopen it as COVID was evolving. Okay. So, but we could, con we could ha submit our comments um, for the November 12th public hearing in Springfield. They have them through the 19th. Uh, at different places, but we would want to submit ours by November 12th, I well, think. Well, they're saying they've got links here, uh, July 22nd, August 20th, September 1st, and September 10th. These are their, if you flip the page, or yeah, am I looking at something were different? You, were you, did you see the ones in the back? A draft is available. So the draft is available. It's a draft available. Oh, wait, wait. That's from September. That's from November um, 19th. Nine, that's 2019. Yeah, these, were all, these are, these these are, are from already last closed. Year. Yeah, oh, so gosh. So they opened it up again. All right. So we I, only have yeah. till the 15th or the 10th. I, I, I only saw the November 19th, uh, the November 12th date. So, right. um, so yes, we have, uh, yes, we'll have to be on it a little bit more faster, Casey, okay? Yeah. All right, so what did you want me to ask Jan? I, I wanted to know if we could, uh, well, the recycling is the problem. So is there any way, I know we're not a social justice community, but is there a way that we can complain about the, them not, or, or them not uh, being more accommodating on the recycling? I can ask. They're not shipping it off. They're incinerating it. So, um, you know, our trash and stuff. So, they, you know, they're, 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 they're making some money on it. I just want to make sure that they have some, some comment from us. Okay? Okay. That means when, uh, do you want me to present you with what the plan is now? at the next meeting or between now and the next meeting so you can review it? No, because you've got too much going on. We'll do it sometime, you know, sometime over the summer. Let Jan, you know, just give, give Jan some time to respond to you. And we could try okay. to, and we'll try to figure it out. I just don't want it, I, I don't want it forgotten, that's all. Because if you don't comment and you don't complain, you have no basis for, um, you know, trying to get it fixed. That's true. Can I ask why we're passing on the appointments? Yes, 
Um, um, we've had more um, requests. We've had requests, Dave, from um, the industrial park uh, um, people. Okay. Um, you know the the um, yeah. down at the park. The tenants. Yes, the tenants. That's what I was trying to think of. Thank you. And so they would like us to to rest to. Um, Think about it some more. Okay. Um, so, uh, okay, Casey, you're all set on that. So we're moving on to contracts. Um, we have the Keller Hair Drive replacement culvert contract, and we have an additional an extension, an extension an amendment for the Mill Village Road. The amendment for Mill longer. Village. Mill Village is a um, Dave. That was what is it? Forty four hundred dollars. Yeah, it was forty four hundred dollars because um, because of the groundwater they. That's because of the yeah the clay they yeah, ran into. I think clay so. and yeah. the groundwater dewatering, David. It, it required longer. a little more oversight than they anticipated. So it turned out. I talked to Zach this morning, and that was his estimate for what that additional oversight by tie and bond cost. Okay. Um, it looks. The, uh, you know, they're digging in the swampy with the with anticipated ground there. But, okay. Well, it actually, they encountered groundwater issues uh, several times. And so at each point, they had to have a little more oversight to make sure that the, the dewatering was taking place. And then they did run into that clay issue. Okay. Ground, the guardrail was being constructed and they should be opening the road with gravel before they pave it. But we were aware that there would be a timing, some timing uh, catch up on this because we had work stoppages a couple times due to the dewatering. Um, it looks pretty good though, Dave. I I'm, I'm, was pretty impressed. Did you have a chance to look at it? I haven't seen yeah. it since. I saw it halfway through construction. Oh, but Well, it was pretty impressive. Oh, yeah. And it handled, I mean, done a good job. it handled the stormwater that we had oh, this last, this last few days. Yeah. Oh, man. There was no, there was really no backup on 5 and 10, which is pretty tremendous. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah I mean, that already is a huge improvement. Mm -hmm. the, the storm that we had on Sunday was an inch and three quarters, and it was literally within 12 minutes, I think. And it took all yeah. the water. It took right. all the water, which was really impressive. That's awesome. Yeah. So. Yeah, it was impressive down here. We ended up with four foot waves. Oh, yeah. yeah? I know. Oh, my God. I know. Yeah. <laughs> but you're enjoying it, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'll make a motion to approve. My garden is. Yeah. yeah, I know. <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve the construction services amendment number one for Mill Village Road culvert replacement for tie and bond for the amount of four thousand four hundred dollars. I'll make a second on that. Is there any more discussion on that, Dave? Do you have any more questions or anything? No. Okay. No. And this falls within the budget, right? Yeah. We're still covered with contingency. Okay. No, it actually no, doesn't actually, fall yeah, within the have, budget. So this is go. something that we would have to pay outside of the budget. And I'm, hmm. I've talked to Brenda about it. It's but, something that we didn't anticipate. But you, isn't there usually a con, uh, contingency on a project like that? Project Not like on that? this one. The contingency had been um, used. No. Well. For what? Can I ask? I don't. I don't know that. I'm not. At, understand, Trevor. I'm not as. I know. as linked into this one because this one is I came into it three quarters of the way through the entire procurement process so I wasn't aware of what the contingencies would be right. and I don't have the benefit of Chris's expertise he's been out of contact because yeah. of the injury he had yeah. a few weeks ago yeah he's been um, in tough shape. but I do think we can pay for it I'm not as worried about paying for it as making sure that we get the change request um, approved because honestly after talking to both to Alex, Kevin, and um, Zach, I think there wasn't anything we could have done. It was unforeseen circumstances. Mm -hmm. and, they, and they didn't give us a change order for the clay, so. No, so far we haven't seen a change order for any of the clay because the way the engineers uh, reviewed it, it falls within the parameters of the construction contract. 
So, but we have. So a, I'm sorry to say it is a little bit over, but I think we can find we have, a place we to have pay money, for it. money um, in the salary line that we can transfer. I was going to talk to Brenda about. We've got a bunch okay. of transfers we have to do, so we were going to sit down and start planning those. More of a reserve transfer. Or we can make a reserve transfer. Or okay, talk but I to, think yeah, we talk have to Brenda. in our office left over that we. Can yeah, do. if we paid it out of contracted services, we're going to have to do a transfer for that anyway. Okay. All right. So. Yeah, we still got a few days that we can transfer, can't we? Yes. yes. Yes, we have to process transfers because you're going to have to vote them by the 15th. Yep. Okay, this way. Okay. Okay. So, I guess you're just looking for a vote now. Yes. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. It's unanimous. Um, now we have the Kelleher Drive culvert um, replacement project. I actually only got through the first probably third of that contract you mean the 290 pages it's 290 pages i did not 298 actually all right well <laughs> that's I... why there's only one full contract in front so we, of you we do I... always have it's um, so long we always have council look at these right council looked at this yes okay good. yes this was produced so this was produced in the procurement document um and so I'm cautiously optimistic on this one, but most of those procurement documents went through council, so I think we should be fine. It's just, I don't know what every, every single contract went through her. So, and I just got it today. So if you're not comfortable, I can yeah. run it past her. Let's do that. But Let's we're in this place her. where we need to get things signed mm -hmm. to get this going. So, and I would make we'd already worked out the Kelleher contract for the construction oversight. So remember we worked that one out. Yep. So I would um, make a motion to approve this and come in and sign at our leisure after council reviews it. Uh, I, I, would okay. se I would second that. Okay. Is that all right? With I you? Amendment that uh, you just might, might stamp. Is that all right? Yes, Dave? we I'm out of time. Dave Stamp. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. Is that all right with you, Dave? If, if, uh, we, vote, yeah. we vote to approve as long as council has review. Mm hmm. Is yeah. Okay. okay. All right. So, um, I'll second that. I'll, 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 so. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, welcome. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Okay. Um, Casey, what we'll do is um, if you can forward that to Lisa. I will. Um, just to make sure so she really did look at that. Um, I know all the bond paperwork is in there because I did look through that and the insurance yeah. and all that. But I, I have to say, I only got to page like 72 or something. I only got a few pages further. <laughs> oh, well. A lot going on. I know. All right. Um, there's a next item on the agenda is a sewer abatement. Um, it seems like uh, the pool was filled after the sewer bill was read. So... Um, we are not going to approve that sewer abatement. Is that correct, Trevor? It seems right. I mean, I'm a little confused about it because it does look like... If you read the letter from the pool company, yeah. they say that they are... they In November, they drain the pool mm -hmm. to look at the liner yep. and then because there apparently was a liner problem. And then they refilled it about 12,400 gallons yep. up to about an inch. Um, and then they went back after, I think it was the 28th of April, and fixed the person's liner and refilled the pool. Yeah. Well, the period that was, um, period where the reading was, was November, check the documents, Trevor, yeah, I don't have was, them right in front yeah, of me, but so, November 1st, I think, to yes. uh, April 15th. Right. And the, pill, the, the pool filling happened, the entire pool filling happened after the 15th. Right, right. it was April 28th. Mm -hmm. and that, yes, and, and they will get that, abate, that normal abatement for their summer usage. Since the reading was 4 15 20, their yep. summer usage begins after that. So they're going to get their, their um, a regular abatement mm -hmm. after that Correct. for the summer usage. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to just, um, I don't want to say it's denied, but it's, it's not approved. 
Right, Trevor. Yeah, it just doesn't it seem still, like it falls within. It still comes out. It doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't fall within the. Um, the dates don't fall within the scope. So we'd have to really wait and see what happened in the in the summer. In the summer, they already get. Right. The Everybody's capped at twenty five percent. At right. Over their winter reading. Because they're going to fill pools. They're going to wash, wash cars. cars the gardens. Everything. Same thing as last week. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, next item on the agenda is mail. Um, I certainly want to acknowledge the gifts from yeah. Deerfield and Eagle Brook. Um, it was very nice to receive um, uh, donations mm -hmm. and gifts from them. Yes. So can I, so I just also wanted to thank, um, we got a nice letter from, from Keith Finan on the, the second payment uh, of the year, which was uh, $64,250. Um, Yep. And he, you know, thanked working with the town and looks forward to working with us in the future yep. on many projects we're working on. And then, um, and then Eagle Brook also, they uh, gave a check this time for four, uh, 46500 and that represented 26000 for the annual gift and then, or for the period, and then uh, a gift of 13000 towards the police department's motorcycle and then also a remaining 7000 500, which represented Eagle Brook's payment towards the pledge for the elementary school roof. So they're continuing to still support that, and I'm very grateful for that. Um, there was also some mail related to dam safety for the Sherman, the Harriman, and the Somerset, and it looks like um, they're in um, adequate condition, which is a relief, so that's nice to hear. Um, and there was also... Um, a letter from Siemens that the, this past period, uh, savings period, we saved $43,440, which is 10,000 more than that was guaranteed um, because of our um, installation green <coughs> communities installations. Um, it seemed like some of the data was not 100% there, but. Well, I was gonna say, I mean, I don't know if they have captured in all that work we did at the elementary school I know, for I don't the green communities so. grant. They probably have no idea that we've done extra work. All those lightings and I know. boiler work and all that. Yeah. I don't, I, well, that's actually something that's an intersect that we need to investigate. Mm -hmm. I got a phone call from Bill Hildreth about it. So oh, Kevin and Bill and I are going to sit down and talk. Oh, okay. that's Thank good you. because um, I think it's really important that we have actually track, really track it more accurately. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would be nice to know that, well, it's good to know that we're making savings, but mm -hmm. it would be good to know exactly how much. A more accurate amount, anyway. Yeah. Um, Casey, do you have um, any updates that you want to share? I do. I do have one question, though, um, about going back to contracts. There's a hazardous mitigation plan update technical assistance contract with the COG mm -hmm. that Kimberly is, is revising now. She's presenting. She's getting it ready for me now. I didn't have it in time for the meeting. Would the board allow me to sign that contract so we can keep that going? We've already got the state extension. Mm -hmm. This is to update our hazardous mitigation plan. We got the state extension on our grant contract with them, yeah. but Kimberly hadn't finished putting together her extension for the technical assistance piece. Um, so I, if you'll allow me to sign it, they can push it forward. Absolutely. I make a motion that we allow Casey to sign the contract to um, uh, Correct. Well, up, finish updating the hazardous mitigation. Um, so we extend plan. the COGS contract with us for technical assistance. Yeah. I'll second that. Trevor McDaniel. Um, is there any, is there, um, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolf. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Okay, Casey, you're authorized to sign it. Thank you. Did Trevor, you, did you second that? Yes, I did. Hey, do you, yeah. um, did you need us to do something with the tax agreement for the Old Frontier Solar, or was that coming up? So I was going to ask you about that. So okay. we're getting towards the end of the Old Frontier Solar 3 project, and this is the project that's located off Set Right Road. Um, town meeting approved going forward with it. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're finalizing the agreement. Yeah. Um, Scott Remmer from Old Frontier had sent me an email yesterday about it. Um, this is a substantially complete contract. The only thing that isn't in there is a copy of the signed warrant sheet, warrant article, what I just got from Barb today, mm -hmm. and the plan. And the reason the plan isn't in there is I have to go back through my email and find it. But would the board, so I was going to send this back to Scott, would the board be willing to 
motion to approve the signatures at their convenience when we receive it back from Old Frontier. Uh, yeah, I don't have any problem. Yeah, that sounds fine. Or do you want to wait until the 15th? No, that's fine. Dave, do, we'll how do you along. feel? It's fine either no, way. I can pass. Fine. I'm, I'm fine with that. I don't that. see a problem with it. Yeah, we could, I mean, once you have it all together, we can come in and sign. Yeah. That's fine. So do you, um, do you want us to vote now then to, well, we can't because we don't actually have the final number. Well, they haven't signed it. Right. So, so now we'll what, what's going to happen is, is I'm going to put that plan, so the, the money plan on it, and I'm right. going to send it to Scott. So he's going to, he wanted to get it signed by the end of the week and get it back to us for a signature. Skip Sobieski's looked at it. Um, and so he's ready to sign it for the assessors. But this is the language we're sending them. Yep. So um, we know what the language minus is. Minus that plan. And I could send you that. But it, I was just trying to help Scott Rimmer out. He's waited a long time for this. It's been over two oh, years. No, so, but, but if you want to wait until the 15th, that's I'm, fine, too. I can tell him that. Uh, no, if, if, as long as the language doesn't change and you're just adding the, uh, the payment, tape, pay, uh, payment schedule, I'm fine. Unless they have an it. issue with the language, it shouldn't right. change. Yeah, if, we've if been back do, and forth for a week, two yeah. weeks on it. If they do have a change, then obviously we'll take a vote, you know, next week. But I think uh, we could revote okay. it. But I think we could vote vote now and move yeah, forward. Yeah, uh, because Casey, um, tomorrow is the end of the week. Don't forget. I think he's, Friday. you're talking I know. next week. Or, yeah, right. <laughs> so um, I know. So no, I'm just saying that we, if we're going to do it, we should just vote it. So you want to make a motion, Trevor? So I'll make a motion to, to uh, approve the tax agreement and sign um, when substantially complete. Sign at your convenience. Yeah, sign at our convenience when it's substantially complete with the payment schedule. That's the only thing missing from this, which we already know and it's been voted at town meeting. So I don't think yeah. there's gonna, nothing's going to change. Yeah, nothing's going to change. And if it does, then obviously you'll come back to us. But um, so I'll make a motion to um, sign and approve the tax agreement between the municipality of the town of Deerfield, the taxpayer of Old Frontier Solar 3 LLC, um, uh, care of Nexamp Inc. for the 20 year term. Um, this is the project uh, certain real property east of Setright Road in the town of Deerfield, also referred to by parcel ID 142-20, consisting of approximately 29 acres. I'll second that motion. Um, is there any further discussion? Dave, are you all set? Yeah, how much revenue is this going to bring into the town annually? Uh, I'm trying to find a number. I haven't found one. That's before. the tax. That's the tax incremental yeah, financing. I, we put that on the warrant article. So that's what I was trying to do is I was trying to right. find that so, Excel spreadsheet so I could just pop it into the contract, but I haven't found it. I think I've it disappeared. Got that. Hang I will find it, but that's why I was asking. If you're not comfortable signing it, David, that's fine. No, I've no, I'm it, it'll be I'm, too. I was, I, you know, I wanted to go ahead just the way, same way I wanted the one at the dump to go ahead. Yeah, it's just that or the landfill, whatever you want to call it. Hold See, on, I'll see if I can it find here. it. You guys I have talk it. I have it here. No, Trevor's found it. Trevor found it. it, Casey. So, um, it, you know, if I have this right, let me just look at this here. I think it was what was presented at town meeting. Yeah, th and this is what was presented at town meeting. And each year, right. depending on the block, total annual benefits solidified once smart program certification is achieved. It looked like roughly about 260000 to 380000 a year. I think for a, is, is that accurate? Uh, it depends on the block that it's in. So depending on what block it falls into, um, some yeah. are more than others. You know, it's like, I think if you're in block 16, it's 164,000 in year one. If you're in block nine, it's 266. So it really depends on how all that gets laid out. But um, yeah, okay. Basic, uh, that's about what I thought it would be. Yeah. I just didn't see the numbers, and I was just curious. Yep. That's all. It yeah. will make um, it, it will make oh, a difference. Here it is. The, sorry, the sorry. 27, the, uh, 27. Uh, sorry. I'll, I'll this do. isn't the to do, do it, but I want to set up where and look at the revenues that are coming in from solar and marijuana mm -hmm. to uh, address a uh, capital stabilization fund, have yeah. part of those funds go there? Yes. Um, so, so we would be getting about $27,101 per year for 20 years, totaling $542,020. That's what was voted. Yeah, I just found that. Thanks, Trevor. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> 
I just didn't have it in the little pretty like Excel spreadsheet. Yep, sounds good. Okay. Um, Twenty-seven thousand a year. Yes. Twenty-seven thousand one hundred one per year for twenty years. The total would be five hundred forty-two thousand twenty dollars. And I think that was um, that was the ta that was right. That was the tax amount. Yes, that's yep. the that's the annual payments to the town according to the tax agreement. Lease payments and property. Oh, I'm sorry. I was looking at um. I've got two mixed up here. There's the next amp one yes. for the solar on the landfill is completely different. That's yes. based that's on the, the larger on the, one. Yes, that's a big the one. intersect between yep. the lease payments and the electricity yes. savings. So that yeah. I'm still catching up with that, that one too. That was the larger one. But You're right. That twenty seven thousand was the smaller project. Thank you. It's a smaller private project, yeah. and it's been in the process since not, I think 2018. Yeah. Um, the I'm looking at the administrative note from the yes. town meeting. Yes. Packet, and so the agreed upon annual payments are 27,101 per year for a total of 542,020 dollars over the 20 year period. Yeah. Um, and this amount was calculated based on the statutory guidelines and predicted costs and revenues of the project. That's right. Okay, I was, that help, I was mixing David? up both of them. Is that just personal property tax, or is that prop property tax as well? No, this is personal property taxes. Okay. 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 Yep. So I guess we have a motion. We have a second. Yep. Um, is there anyone? Um, oh, do you want any more discussion, Dave? No, I'm all set. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Trevor McDaniel. Aye. Dave Wolfram. I, Carolyn Ness. All right. Um, Casey, did you have anything else? Oh, talking? yeah, I got a couple things. Hold on. Okay. I try to type and talk at the same time. It never works. <laughs> okay. So I was on the MMA's co CEO update today, and there's a couple things I wanted to bring to your attention. Um, Desi is working with administration and finance and with the governor's office on the phased approach for the fall school semester. They are asking districts to complete feasibility studies for the three options of educating students. And those options are continuation of distance learning, a hybrid staggered type of in-person model with modifications to space um, in order to create social distancing, and then an in-person learning, so fully into a school learning um, model. They're also working, Desi, I mean, is working with administration and finance to develop a CARES Act grant fund specifically to address technological issues that schools are facing. Um, so they're asking for some reports back from the district. I'm very certain that Darius has folks working on this, but he's going to be ramping up to do several things, especially from what Bill tells me. So he's going to be a pretty busy guy. <laughs> Desi's working with medical professionals to solve the questions on face coverings, messaging to parents about safety, and that sort of thing. So we'll start to see that stuff roll out over the next several weeks. Um, uh, Lieutenant Governor Polito's updates were, they're focusing on the economics of reopening safely. So our numbers are down, but they're watching the surges in other states. One thing that they have made a change to is the travel guidance. So the travel guidance as of today is there's no quarantine when traveling in the New England states, New York, and New Jersey. But all others, the 14-day quarantine advisory should be followed. Um, they're going to be re reviewing the gathering numbers, so the, the number of people that can be at any space at one time. Um, and we may see more information on that by the end of the week, so tomorrow. Um, we have a, we have a call. They also may make a change to when they start the next phase. We're not sure, but as Carolyn said earlier, we didn't have any deaths. Was it yesterday, Carolyn? Yesterday, yesterday yeah. It was the yes. first time yeah. since so February. They're watching. It's all based on data is really what it boils down to. Um, they may address office capacity allowances, and that was a couple people in the audience, my peers, asked those questions because a lot of the bigger towns are experiencing staffing challenges and, and staggering. We're staggering and trying to have people work at home 
it's difficult. It's, it's challenging for everybody. So that was a big question. And then there's some legislative changes related to restaurants that are moving through the Senate. I haven't read the bill, though, so I'm not quite positive of all, all that that means. So those were some of the things that came up in the call. There were other questions, but those were the highlights, I guess. Usually what happens, um, the DPH call, like tomorrow, will we'll follow up on the stuff that they started with you today. So yep. that's why we have those. I'll be curious to see what they say. Yeah, they have, you know, ours are usually Monday and Friday. Well, um, now, I mean, Tuesday and Friday, um, because of the holiday, it's Tuesday and Thursday this week. So we'll see what happens. Okay. Um, I'll let you know if there's any changes. Thank you. Because, um, well, I had actually submitted a question about um, the capacity um, because uh, Barbara, Barbara's office with Brenda's um, office right there, they would not be able to work together. And they have been working together all summer. So... Um, I was trying to figure but out they've how... they've had their hours staggered, Carolyn. That's right. the thing. They've been staggering hours so that right. they can meet right. the need, but right. also... Right, but they, still, but they still have been in there. You know, um, they're talking about 25%, so there would be one person instead of two, and, um, or three, or four. I mean, four is not... I don't know if we're going to get to four, all four, but... Um, Casey, in my... This is Jen... Is it, am I wrong that it's the whole building? It's not just their space. No, it's by office. It's by each office. It's 25%. Right. And, that's, and we were supposed to comply um, by, you know, have our plans by July 1st, today. But um, they, if we felt it was essential, then you were able to get a waiver. And we got, you know, I, re, I figured, you know, well... Dave, uh, Dick and I decided we had, we had the ability to waive um, that 25% capacity cap because it just, it, I mean, we're doing everything we can to keep everyone safe. The, sh the town hall is shut down. Um, you know, it's crazy to think that you would only have one person in that office. Well, we can't pay essential staff without having people in there. And I will say, Carolyn, during the week, they stagger the numbers of who's in and out at different times. I know, so, I know. So because I've, Jennifer isn't, Jen, I mean, Jen Wallace isn't always in at the same time every day. Um, Sarah comes in late or comes in early and leaves early. Um, so that's, that's actually happening. But in order for us to process payroll process bills and keep, you know, keep know. our services being um, provided, we have to have those, they are essential staff. We can't pay bills without them. No, I know, but that's why we figured we, you know, we had legitimate basis for a waiver because, yes. you know, we, yes. and we have been doing everything to keep everybody safe, you know, so there has not been any issues in my mind. So, um, you know, so that, that's why we did it. Um, so, um, so was there anything else, Casey? Nope, that's it. Okay. Um, the, the only other anticipated um, issue was the stormwater grant opportunity. Trevor, I, Dave, I didn't, you know, I told them we were interested in it. We have the stormwater regs, um, but I didn't want to, um, I wanted to find out a little bit more about the opportunity before we voted to participate. Yeah, because we're, you know, I, we just received today the, uh, or yesterday, the um, pavement type alternative analysis but for the, for the Leary lot and Frontier. And so I'm just kind of reading through that now, it's kind of all the very similar things that, that you know, I just, I just read FERCOG's letter and then I just read um, the pavement type alternative analysis. They speak of the same exact thing. So we're already doing all of that, but maybe they, do they want to just learn from us? I'm, I'm not sure what they're looking no, to do. No, they're looking they for provide. us to um, participate. They have some money, mm -hmm. and that's why I thought, oh, this makes sense for us to participate because this could be, our, with us participating, could be part of the match. Yeah, well, that, I'm fine with that. Um, because this is this is this is work to to figure out this. You know What's what the needed. BMP is and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So um, 
I, I figured that we would say yes if we could use this as a match, and I yeah. think we can. Um, it would save us a little bit on the Leary It lot. doesn't cost us anything, right? No, 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 okay. no. Um, but the money, the, our portion of the grant would, could be used towards uh, the match, I think. Yeah. It wouldn't hurt anyway. But because what happens is this would be um, help us also with the complete streets um, application. Yeah. Yeah, that would um, be great. If, especially yeah, if we're doing it we're down here. Yeah, and I'd love to have that all figured. Yeah. Okay. So it would, I think it would save us some money. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Okay. Casey, do you want a formal vote on that, or do you want to just say it was consensus? Well, I guess my issue is, is where do we fit this in the workflow? Because well, it's yet we, one more grant. We've got 14 grants that no, I'm aware no, no. of right they're, now. They're, they're running the grant. grant. They're they, running the grant. They do it. So they it's do not it. us. It's just them being involved when they we're want doing a town. the complete street stuff. They want a town that will participate. Well, I think we also have to intersect with Chris and with the planning board because exactly. he's got stormwater regulations in front of the planning board. Yes. Oh, I think the changes. So they, how that comes together planning? is really my question because that's sort of a facilitation thing. Well, why don't we put, put um, who, I don't know who's running this one, but from Kimberly. the FERCOG, but have Kimberly talk with uh, Chris about it and see how it fits into the what we're doing. Yeah. And see if it's a All benefit, right. you know? Because I, I don't I think, want to create more work for you, but if it, if Chris is like, yeah, well, this is what we're doing already, and yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm just I think this will count towards our match. So I I was hoping that we would participate. The match for what? You have to come up with a local match when you do any of this MVP stuff. So I know, but usually your match comes. You're allowed to match after you've been approved. So let me ask Kimberly about that because a lot of the things that people have run into for problems is the match may, the stuff that they think could be matched against it isn't usable because either it doesn't intersect because they don't allow you to use other grants to pay for grants mm -hmm. or the match has to happen after you've signed a contract, signed a contract with the state for the grant. Well, so that's my only concern. I've seen it happen several times. Well, bring those concerns so to I think to that's Chris. my question for Kimberly. Kimberly yeah. and Chris, yeah, just talk yeah, about that. See if that, we can integrate it, it cuz what we're doing. I I think this okay. will, I think this work is a match. Okay. Um for the MVP5. But I mean, of course okay. we, have, we haven't been awarded it yet, but we should pretty soon and um I mean, we should hear about it pretty soon. And this is for um coming up pretty soon. So I, I think you should be able to coordinate it, Casey. Yeah, I'll send, it's actually Megan that sent us the email, so I'll shoot Megan an email back and ask her about it. Yeah. Okay. And then I can put her in touch with Chris. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So that... it depends. Do you want to take a vote or do you want me to consider it consensus? Consensus is fine. Consensus is okay. fine because. Yeah. Um... You okay with that, David? Yeah, that'll work. Okay. Okay. Um. Is there anything else, Casey, that you can think of? Uh, hold on a second. Let me just check my... Nope. Go all night. <laughs> what about the park? What's that? What about the park? Oh, the closure. Yeah, the closure. So we're finishing up the uh, North Main Street uh, Prevere land purchase. Yeah. Uh, we're waiting for the title examiner to uh, pick up the documents from our office. We've... Um, sent all the information we needed to to our lawyers. And so once the title examiner gets everything to the registry, it should be all done. Oh, good. We yeah. We have to start some planning yeah. meetings. Um, John, John has We got some on, help. John has been working on the um, Parks Grant. Yeah. So. Yeah, so right. he's working on the grant that we could pursue in relation to the property. Okay. So kudos to him for helping us yeah, out because great. we just, uh, that, I, I couldn't fit that in. And Jennifer and I both looked at each other and went. Yeah, no, I know. We no, have a lot. Overloom. No, it's John, no, John kudos came, to him. No, John came in on his um, vacation day. And, yeah, um, several on, actually. Yeah, worked on it. <laughs> I know. Because so. I asked him to go home and he wouldn't do it. So good for him. He, uh, but I think he's almost done with the parks grant. So. That's really helpful, and we really appreciate that. Okay. Yes. All See. right. Well, um, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Well, no, we've got oh. two.
two um, unanticipated items. We had the use of the memorial field. Oh, no. No. We don't have anything to deal with there. We can't officially approve of anything and more. And we've done that. Okay. Right. We're not officially approving, but we've had com conversations, right? Yeah, but we can't, um, right now, Governor's Order 38, we can't um, officially approve anybody using any okay. town property. Fine. Um, we'll have a, a meeting number greater than 10. Yep. And uh, Carolyn, that is Governor or Governor's Order 38 is the limitation on the number of people gathering both indoor and outdoor, correct? Yes. Um, it is, okay. It's, this is the tail end of the letter that was sent out um, based on our phone call on Tuesday because there was so many problems uh, boards of health were having. So this was the tail end and it, it says the COVID order number, the Commonwealth order, COVID number 38, gathering sizes exceed the allowable number and bring people into close proximity in any confined indoor or outdoor space remain prohibited. The confined. limitation confined indoor or outdoor space. Right, if you're in an outdoor space and confined, if you're in an outdoor space in a large field, that's a different story. Nope, this limitation right. specifically applies to gatherings such as fairs or festivals, parades, fireworks, town picnics, anything that increases the risk of transmission of COVID-19 that jeopardizes our continued progress in mitigating COVID-19 and puts individuals at risk. Basically, they, they said no, uh, no um, uh, sponsored anything. But, is, but they did say town meetings were okay. Uh, town meetings and town exemption? elections were exempt I from see. this exempt. order. Okay. Um, and, that was, and that was actually from the very beginning. Right. Because legally we had to do it. You have a budget. I mean, we had no choice. Right. Okay. I well, mean, we know. had to have it outdoors or in an unconfined outdoor space. Yeah. Um, but we, um, uh, you know, they don't want us to do any kind of, you know, like Susie, Susie would like to do a count concert and we were trying to figure out how we could do it socially sponsor, uh, distance. And at this time we cannot do it. Um, I, I did ask that because and that's where one of the, this is why the letter was generated. Okay. Because, uh, you know, a lot of times boards of health are separate than from select boards. So um, select boards were going ahead and planning um, activities and boards of health were saying, no, you can't. And so this was they generated by the governor saying you can't. Okay. Did um, they give a time frame when they think they'll lift that? Uh, same case, they may actually, Trevor. Sorry, Carolyn. They, that's what the lieutenant governor said today is they're reviewing their gathering numbers. So we may see a change on that as early as next week. Right. It might be a Maybe. number change, but it's yeah. not going to be like a, hey, you can have the big no. E right now. No. Right now. Yeah, they're not going to let us have the big yeah. E, darn it. No, <laughs> no. no. They're not. Fried dough. I mean, what are they, they going to do even, with it? They don't even want fireworks and stuff. But I have to say, we are one of the few states that um, the New the England rules. states you know, we're opening up safely and the virus is yeah. contained. Yeah. The infection rate is below, um, is below one, it's 0 0.71, which means right. it's below one. So for every person infected, there is less than a person being transmitted to. So that that's fabulous. And we, although in test, testing is still hard to get, there is more testing available and our infection rate is below 2%. And it really is, if you get below 5%, then it's pretty good. So mm -hmm. ours is below 2.3 or 2.2 or something like that. So we're doing fantastic. And so that's why please, please keep wearing your masks. It's, they're terrible, you know, who, nobody likes them, but they are very, very effective. And it's more effective than anything out there. So please social distance as much as possible. Only do what you really have to do. Uh, Try, you know, everybody's getting really tired of being penned in. And so, you know, open up your circle a little bit, reach out to some other families or other people, but people that you feel confident have been careful mm -hmm. and, you know, have a picnic outside over 4th of July or something yourself. And, yeah. but try to keep your, try to keep the, everybody, you know, um, paying attention and social distancing, wearing masks is very effective. We just, we got to keep it up. Um, 
otherwise we're, you know, we're, we're in for a long haul here. And so we're just so thankful that we live where we live. Our upcoming meetings were July 15th, July 29th. Do we need to meet before the 15th to um, request transfers, or is that not something the select board makes? Or is it well, just, just it depends go to... on the transfers that are crafted. Transfers okay. between accounts require a vote from the finance committee and the select board. Okay. Um, but the deadline is the 15th. Now, like I said, Brenda and I are going to sit down and start going through this. Yeah. However, you need us before the that. superintendent has asked for a meeting on the 9th of July okay. at 1230 to sit down and discuss the sewer affluent issues that we've experienced in the past couple of weeks. So we ha might have an opportunity to go through transfers oh. after that discussion. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. That works. So yeah. we will have one meeting next week. And like I said, at this point, I think the date and time is 7-9-2020 at 12.30 p.m. Okay. And we're going to set up, I think actually Jennifer's already set up the Did meeting. Did you say 12.30? Yeah. Um, 12 Did you say, 30. oh, 12.30. Okay, yeah. I can, I can make it. Yeah. So it's after your call, Carolyn. Yep. Yeah. All right. Thank so you. So if Thank we you. need to do something, then we can. But let me talk to Brenda and see okay. what she says. Yeah, let us know. Carolyn. Carolyn, could you also answer um, the email that I sent you about meeting, you know, before that time, what? not with a full quorum? Oh, right. What? We need to have a conversation with Dave Prickett, Carolyn. And oh, and oh, yes. And we probably don't I, do that. You know what I can do? I can come down here and do my state commission call down here and just be and and just drop off. I mean, it's not well, like. Well, I think what. Yeah. Awesome. But I mean right. another meeting, a yes, separate we'll, meeting. Oh, a separate we'll meeting. Not, not the 1230 meeting. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, she'll answer okay. that. We need to have a conversation with the engineer. And so it would be the superintendent, um, the engineer, and a representative from the board and from the administrative offices so that we can understand what what's our impact or and then, you know, sit down and have a frank conversation with all of the board members okay. and the other constituents involved in these affluent issues. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm sure I, I, I'm sure I can work it out because I can be on, this is a state commission call. I just, I just have to be there to vote a couple times. And well, motion, do you want to Trevor to sit in with that? He's been kind of busy with the, with the sewer stuff, or do you want to sit in? Oh, I think that was Jennifer's question. In the first meeting, and then all of us will sit in the second meeting. Oh, well, the yeah. only thing is, I kind of really want to make sure I. The thing is, I I have to understand it, um, to be. Uh, so I would really want to be there. So then I won't okay. be there. Okay. No, no, no. I can't be, or else we have no, to post the meeting. No, we can't. It, okay. Meeting. All right. It, we, this isn't something. No, this, I this want. This is an administrative meeting. Right. Oh, then I. And want then we to, have an open meeting and discuss everything. Okay, you know, that so I want those of us that have to share well. <laughs> no, I want Trevor to be the point person on this so he understands, and then he, he can then we'll just have to explain it to me before the big yeah. meeting. Okay, yeah. then that will be fine. Okay, I can explain it. Yeah. I think. I just want to make sure that I have a grasp of the numbers the same with Dave. and the time Everybody wants to know exactly and the timeline because yeah. I, the numbers don't make sense to me mm -hmm. when we're talking about thirty thousand dollar I mean a thirty thousand gallon dump. Mm -hmm. I mean, how does that register? How do you know it even comes out? Right. You know, where do we, are we sure that that's where this mm -hmm. is going to be mm -hmm. the issue? Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. All right. Okay. I, the numbers I just wanted to make yeah, sure. Yeah, we can of. help with that. Yeah. All right. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Look at this. The sun's out. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm out of a minute. This thing. is crazy. I the, know. The, the, the park behind the town hall? Yes. The, the use of Memorial Field, no. due to the governor's uh, order number 38, no gatherings of 10 or more, or 10 or of 10. Indoors or outdoors are allowed, so they can't approve the use of the field. Right oh, here. Okay. I'm sorry. I thought, okay. Yeah. No, I guess no. I missed that. Sorry, I'm right yeah. here. No. Am I repeating myself correctly? Yes. Carolyn? Yes, yes. that is correct. It's not okay. a, we town, can, it's we not cannot, a town sponsored. It's not, it can't be anything. It can't we be can, a town sponsored. We thing. can't approve of any use. Yeah. Um, okay, thank you. Than, sorry about that. Thank nope, you. That's all right. All right. Do I, we have a second? I make that second. Dave, are you okay? <laughs>
Dave's gone. Yeah, no. I'm okay. <laughs> All right. My computer froze up. Oh, okay. okay. I got the phone. All right. All right. Well, enjoy your time, Dave. Yes, and have a wonderful vacation. And everybody enjoy a really sa safe and happy 4th of July. Yes. And uh, just enjoy your family and your friends and take a few days. Take the boat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> What's that? Take the boat. Take the boat? Or yeah, the bo we oh, have the to vote. Oh. Take a vote to adjourn. Vote Trevor to adjourn. was just yeah. telling I like everybody to just to tell everybody to yeah. enjoy themselves before yes. we leave. Yes, have a, have a good family vacation yes. time together. Motion to adjourn. I'm, I second, second that. All those All in favor. favor. Aye. Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. So it was unanimous. Good night, Casey. everybody. Good night, everybody.